The most popular video on this channel by far, at least in this early stage in its life, is the fastest graphics card on a PCI bus. Now, get ready for its follow-up, as we see how PCI compares to 1X PCI Express and 16X PCI Express using the GeForce GT 520. This is Pixel Pipes. This video went through several conceptual iterations, uh, with the first one centered around a three-way comparison between PCI, AGP, and PCI Express, originally using the GeForce 6200, which natively supports each of those interfaces. I like the idea of pitting multiple generations of interfaces against each other, uh, but that was really one interesting comparison and one completely pointless comparison, as obviously AGP and PCI Express will show virtually no difference using such an old and low-end card. So I scrapped that idea for now. Instead, I figured it makes a lot more sense to start with one of the fastest PCI graphics cards and compare it to its PCI Express counterpart. And it so happens that uh, Zotac made both a 1X and a 16X PCI Express version of the GT520, later renamed the GT610. A 1X PCIe 2.0 connector delivers about 500 megabytes per second of bandwidth, just a smidge under a 2X AGP slot, making it kind of an interesting point of comparison against the more modern 8 gigabytes per second um, that the 16X equivalent will get you. There's just one problem. My Windows XP test system only supports PCI Express 1.1, cutting that bandwidth in half. Only my main desktop system supports the newer standard. The solution? Test on both. Um, it's running Windows 10, so I won't be testing everything on there, but it should hopefully be enough to get an idea of the impact PCI Express 2.0 has on the results. First, let's take a look at how the cards perform using the oldest PCI Express standard in my newest Windows XP testbed. I've thrown in the scores from the other cards seen in the first video for good measure, though I've retested the 7800 GTX as I'm using a faster platform this time. In 3D Mark 2001, we're seeing the PCI card get surprisingly close to the 1X PCI Express card, though it's still a 56% difference. The jump from 1X to 16X PCI Express isn't nearly as dramatic, at only 20%, and it's only barely edging out the 9800 Pro. The score for the 7800 GTX shoots through the roof on my faster Core 2 Duo platform, and even the PCI GT520 does better here than before as well as in every other benchmark in this video, something I plan to delve into detail on in my next project. In 3D Mark 03, the PCI GT520 drops well behind the PCI Express variants, both of which are neck and neck with each other. The Express cards soundly beat the 9800 Pro, but as you can see, fall way short of the 7800 GTX. However, in 3D Mark 05, we can see the 16X GT520 getting very close to the 7800 GTX, proving that some of its theoretical numbers can actually bear out in rare cases. The PCI variant is still the slowest by far, and the 1X Express card loses 27% of the performance of the 16X card. But when we take a step back to Quake 3, we see that memory bandwidth is king, with a noticeable but very gradual degradation of performance between the GT520. None of them are able to beat any of the other cards, although the 16X version basically matches the TI 4600. The 7800 GTX's lead gets rather hilarious on my overclocked E8600, completing the entire benchmark in literally two seconds. In Serious Sam The Second Encounter, we see a more even distribution of the GT520s across the chart, with the top one beating the 9800 Pro. They're still light years away from the 7800 GTX though, which is starting to feel like it doesn't belong with this bunch. The 1X PCI Express card loses about 36% performance, whereas the PCI card loses 45% off of that. Halo seems a lot less dependent on interface bandwidth, though the PCI card still obviously loses the most performance. 
all cards are still able to best the 9800 Pro. And if it even needs to be said, none of them get close to the 7800 GTX. Unreal Tournament 2004 shows a fairly linear performance scaling between the GT520s, with the One X PCI Express version performing 74% faster than the PCI version, and the 16X version besting the One X card by 52%. Half-Life 2 actually seemed significantly harsh on the PCI card, more so than it initially seemed in my first video. In fact, the performance tanked drastically on my Core 2 Duo platform, getting frame rates in the teens. This was the only game with this issue, and so I elected to recycle the PCI card's results from my Athlon 64 system, hence the asterisk. But as you can see, the PCI Express cards are doing fantastically well, actually managing to edge close to the 7800 GTX. Doom 3 is pretty forgiving of bandwidth constraints, and shows a fairly linear but relatively tight grouping of performance between the GT520s. The PCI GT520 still manages a very playable frame rate, losing only 25% of the performance of the 1X PCI Express card. Lastly, Far Cry absolutely murders the PCI card, and doesn't much care for the 1X PCI Express card either. This is certainly the game affected most by interface bandwidth out of the bunch. It's amazing to see the 9800 Pro actually beating the 1X card here. So overall, the PCI GT520 suffers the most in performance, as anyone would expect. But it's not as bad as one might have thought. It's still crippled to be sure, but it can achieve as much as 75% of the performance of the 1X PCI Express card, and generally hovers around 50-60% to of the performance the rest of the time. But the real potential of the GT520 can only be seen in the full 16X PCI Express variant, and the PCI card only gets around 30% of the performance of the full version, with a few outliers in the 50-60% to range. The 1X PCI Express card actually fares pretty well here, even with the PCI Express 1.1 standard cutting its already limited bandwidth in half. It can obtain performance in the 90 percentile range of the 16X card in a couple of cases, with others in the 80s. Next we'll move on to PCI Express 2.0, which should help the 1X card the most. I wasn't able to get the PCI card to even post on my Core i7-2600K system for some reason, so it'll have to sit this one out. I only tested 5 of the 10 benchmarks on the newer system just for a brief overview, and also I'll save the individual commentary for each benchmark this time around. Yeah, uh, overall a pretty underwhelming difference, and in some cases performance even went down, especially for the 16x card, probably because we're using old benchmarks in a Windows 10 64-bit system with modern drivers. Um, the exception is 3 d Mark 2001, which was probably more affected by the Core i7-2600K clocked at 4.5 GHz than anything else. This was an interesting exploration for me, but I will readily admit that it was pretty limiting using a budget card from 2010, especially when testing PCI Express bandwidth. That's honestly a subject that's been covered already quite extensively by bigger and better established tech channels out there, so it really doesn't make a lot of sense for me to cover it much more than I already have here. I will say it's quite easy to test PCI Express bandwidth using a newer and more powerful graphics card, and you don't even need to wait for a manufacturer to make a 1X or 8X version. You can just buy a riser cable that will fit in a 1X slot, such as those used in the Bitcoin mining world, or even just simply cover up the unneeded pins with electrical tape, or physically mutilate the connector with a cutting tool. So what about that PCI card? Well, as I said, performance mysteriously went up when I plugged it into my newest Windows XP test system. And that opens up, or should I say reopens, a bunch of questions about the real potential performance of PCI cards. So that's something I'll be looking to address in my very next mainline video, so be on the lookout for that. 
As always, I want to thank you all for watching or even subscribing to this channel. Please check me out on Twitter at PixelPipes for frequent updates as I'm making videos, as well as on Instagram for behind the scenes photos. And if you want to message me directly, you can either do that by my Facebook page or via email at pixelpipes at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Nathan, and this has been Pixel Pipes.